Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and to the first episode of Research Paper Summary, a new series where I summarize the main contributions and ideas from different AI-related research papers. In today's video, I'll be covering a survey paper on knowledge graphs, talking about knowledge graph representation, acquisition, and application. So let's get to it. If you're new here, my name is Ryan. I'm a first-year PhD student based in London, and on this channel, we explore and share actionable insights on different topics in AI research, entrepreneurship, and life design, encouraging us to take more actions and live a happier and more intentional life. If this topics interest you, consider subscribing. In terms of what we'll be covering in this video, I will start off with a brief introduction on knowledge graph. We will then jump straight into mapping out the current research landscape. And lastly, we will finish up with a list of seven categories of future work in the knowledge graph space. A knowledge graph is a structured representation of facts, and facts are made up of entities and relations. Entities can be referring to real life objects, such as people or organization. Relationships in this sense is capturing the connections between two different entities. So for example, Elon Musk is the founder of SpaceX. So what this means is that Elon Musk and SpaceX are two different entities and the founder of is a relation type. Before moving on, I want to clarify the difference between knowledge graph and knowledge base. Knowledge graph and knowledge base are used interchangeably and they're very similar with a subtle difference being that a knowledge base is a list of factual triplets, which I'll go over more in a second. Whereas knowledge graph is a graphical representation of the knowledge base with graph structure in it. In this survey paper, it gives us a brief history of the knowledge graph development. The two key takeaways here are resource description framework, RDFs, and knowledge volume which is what popularized knowledge graph. RDF is how you represent facts in knowledge base or knowledge graph. It's essentially the, the triplets that I was talking about. RDF represents fact in the form of head, relation, and tail entities. In our examples of Elon Musk, founder of SpaceX, Elon Musk is the head entity, SpaceX is the tail entity, and founder of is the relation that connects those two entities together. We are now moving on into mapping out the current research landscape in knowledge graphs. There are four main research areas in knowledge graphs. We have knowledge representation learning, knowledge acquisition, temporal knowledge graphs, and knowledge aware applications. Let's start with knowledge representation learning. Just like with natural language processing where you need to convert text into numerical forms before you can use it or analyze it, knowledge graph is no different. This is a very important research area because other research area and applications are built on top of this foundation. Within knowledge representation learning, you are further split into four sub areas. We have representation space, scoring function, encoding models, and auxiliary information. Representation space covers how entities and relations should be represented. Scoring function measure the correctness of a factual triplet. Encoding models is where you model and learn the relational interactions between entities. Lastly, we have auxiliary information, where we try to incorporate additional information such as text, audio, and visual to enhance the embedding methods. We are now moving on to knowledge acquisition. Knowledge graph is often very large, simply because they include many, many different facts in this world. However, existing knowledge graph is nowhere near capturing all the facts in this world. Knowledge acquisition is the research area that focuses on acquiring new knowledge. There are two ways of acquiring new knowledge. We either expand the existing knowledge graph or we acquire new knowledge through analyzing new unstructured data. Knowledge acquisition has three main subtasks. We have knowledge graph completion, entity discovery and relation extraction. Knowledge graph completion or link prediction allow us to expand existing knowledge graph and to discover new knowledge. Entity discovery and relation extraction allow us to extract new knowledge from unstructured data. The third research area is temporal knowledge graph. Most existing research focuses on static knowledge graph where facts doesn't change over time. How should we deal with old knowledge or knowledge that is simply not true anymore given time or new knowledge? And that's the focus of temporal knowledge graph, also known as dynamic knowledge graph, where we're trying to add time information into the knowledge graph embeddings. Within temporal knowledge graph, we have four main sub areas. We have temporal embeddings, we have entity dynamics, we have temporal relational dependency, and we have temporal logical reasoning. Temporal embedding simply focuses on adding time element or information into the knowledge embeddings. Entity dynamics focus on how real world events change the original entity state and relations. Temporal relation dependency focuses on capturing certain relations that depends and evolves over time. An example of relational dependency is as follows. You have was born in, graduate from, work at, and died in. This relation clearly is followed one after the other and evolves over time. The question here is how can we incorporate this information into our knowledge graph embeddings? Lastly, we have temporal logical reasoning where we focus on using logical rules for temporal reasoning. 
The last main research area of Knowledge Graph is Knowledge Aware Applications. Here we focus on how we could use Knowledge Graphs to enhance the performance of certain applications. For example, Knowledge Graph can be added to natural language understanding models to enhance language representations. Knowledge Graph can also be used to tackle question answering tasks. We have single fact question answering, which involves simple fact-based questions. We also have multi-hop reasonings, which involves multi-hop relations and common sense reasonings. Lastly, we can also use Knowledge Graph to solve some of the problems that recommendation systems face. For example, sparsity in data and co-star problem. The last part on future work. Just like any other research areas, there are still many open research questions in Knowledge Graph. And this can be grouped into seven main categories. Complex reasoning, unified framework, interpretability, scalability, knowledge aggregation, and automatic construction and dynamic knowledge graphs. And that's it for today's video. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe as I'll be covering more research paper summary in future videos. Feel free to check out other videos on my channel covering entrepreneurship and life design. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys around next time.